If you're new to creating firewall rules in OpenSense, one option which may be confusing is the direction option. The direction option has values of in and out, which might be confused with source and destination, but it actually means traffic that is entering into the firewall and leaving the firewall via various interfaces that are on the firewall. But it's from the firewall's perspective, and I'll show you what this means with some various diagrams to kind of show you how the traffic is flowing and when the rules will apply if you use direction in versus out. Okay, so here's an example of a firewall that has four interfaces on it with the WAN LAN optional one and optional two interfaces, and then appears the internet connection. And we have three computers down here, but they could be three networks, you know, with a switch plugged into these. So uh, I'm just kind of keeping it simple with an example of this, say, three computers and one on each interface. And so I'm going to walk through direction in what it means. So first of all, this is where if you see the traffic is flowing into the interfaces in through in through the firewall, this is the direction of in, right? Makes sense. And then direction of out, it's going to be pretty much the opposite, right? It's a direct, you know, traffic coming out of the firewall. But Let's see what happens when we start analyzing how the traffic is going to actually flow between the networks because this will make more sense with the direction, how it's different than source and destination. And it makes a difference on how the firewall rules are processed and it also uh, affects the efficiency of the firewall rules as, as well. Boiler alert, firewall of direction in is actually more efficient than direction out and we'll, I'll show you why here in a second. So now we're back to direction in. So we have the firewall and our interfaces and our PCs. So let's say we have a flow going between PC1 and PC2. And so I'm kind of showing this dot, dotted line between these two interfaces just to kind of show you that it's going you know, into the LAN interface and out of the optional one. But really, data is going to go in the LAN and come out of optional one interface. Okay, to go to PC1 to PC2, let's say we have a firewall rule that says allow PC1 to access PC2. Right. So then this PC is going to be able to access this um, PC2 with this firewall rule. And so with direction in, the firewall rule is actually on the LAN interface to allow PC1 that's on the LAN interface to be able to reach PC2, which is on the optional one interface. So sometimes people want to put the rules on the other side, on the optional one, and say, let me, you know, PC1 allow it to access PC2. So with the way the rules are with the direction in, you actually want to put up where the source is, where the PC1 is. So let's look at this. If you look here, a lot of people might think that direction out is actually where it's coming out of the LAN interface, like say PC1 traffic is going in and they think it's gonna come out of the LAN interface here. And I think if you put if you put direction out on the firewall rule, it's actually gonna catch it here, but it's actually not what it means. Direction out is actually an optional one interface. So with direction out, so let's, this is going to be interesting because we would say we have the same uh, tra you know, file transfer or whatever data transfer between PC1 to PC2. And let's say we have another transfer going from PC3 to PC2 coming from optional two network. So now we got two data streams coming into this PC and it could be a network, but we're just going to use a PC as well, just as an illustration. So if we look at the direction out here, Notice that there's going to be more packets to process with the same rule. So before we had the rule in the LAN interface, and it's only processing traffic from the LAN interface, which in this case it's just one PC. But if we do a rule that has direction out and we add it to the optional one interface, you'll notice that it actually has more data packets to process for that single rule because now we've got an, another PC for another network also coming out of the optional one interface. So now we have twice as much you know, data streams coming through here. So there's a lot more data packets, right? That this one rule, if we did the same basic rule on optional one interface to allow access from PC1 to PC2, we're gonna notice you got more data to process. That's why out rules are a lot less efficient. And just imagine if you have a whole network behind each of these interfaces and there's a lot of computers you know, sending data across the different networks, you can see how there's a lot more data to process here than there would be if it was just on the network where the traffic is originating from. So that's one thing to consider with the directional out rules. So now I'm going to show you a real world example of how this actually will work with your firewall rules because it's kind of interesting. It might not be quite what you think. So I want to sh switch over to my PC right now and show you an example. So now I'm on my PC and you notice I created a firewall rule to allow this PC to access my next cloud server via SSH. 
And if you look here and I'll try to log into my SSH server, you can see that it allows me access, right? And I have this as an in rule. So we're gonna start off with the direction to be an in to the interface. So if I switch this to out, this, is, this rule will no longer work because the traffic for going from this PC to my other to my server is actually, it's gonna go out a different interface. So I just wanna show illustration purposes that if I change that from in to out, now that rule is no longer going to work. So now I'm, you know, I'm dead in the water right there. So now let's go back here and change this back to in so it works again. To demonstrate the um, out direction from the other interface, this is gonna be kind of interesting because if, if I disable this rule, I can't go to the IoT network here where my Nextcloud server is. I can't actually uh, put a rule here that says allow my PC to access my server with um, the direction being out because the way I have my firewall rules set up on my LAN network, it's blocking access from that network, from the LAN network to the IoT network. Because I have that rule in there, the traffic can't even get out of that network to be able to get to this network, to the IoT network to go out. So to demonstrate how the out direction will work on the IoT interface, I'm actually going to do a block rule. So as you notice here, this is a block rule, I have it disabled, but I'm going to enable it. And I'm gonna show you what I actually have set up in this rule once I enable it. Let's apply changes real quick. Uh, so I'm gonna go in here and edit this rule. So notice I have this as an out direction and I have it as a block rule because what I'm going to do, I need to allow it out of the LAN interface first so it can get to the IoT interface just so I can block it because I can't create an allow rule to show you this example because it's already gonna be blocked on the other network, okay? So this is this is something you wouldn't necessarily would wanna do, but just for illustration purposes. So you notice I have a block rule here and I have the direction is out. Um, so I'm basically saying any traffic that's coming from the other network, from my PC on the LAN network, uh, I wanna block it from accessing my servers. This is kind of an awkward way to doing it. You definitely wouldn't wanna do this, but I'm actually doing this for illustration, of course. So now if I go to my SSH server, you'll see that it's blocked. Even though I'll actually have it allowed, I'll show you here in the LAN interface, I actually have it allowed access from the LAN to the IoT, but because I have this uh, block rule here, with the out direction, because the traffic, as I showed you in the diagram, is actually coming out of the IoT interface. It's going into the LAN interface, but coming out of the IoT interface. You can see how I filtered that traffic out by using this block rule. This is a good example of how to show the out rules on the other interface where the traffic is coming out of that interface. So I hope that this shows you the difference between the in direction and the out direction and what it means for traffic to actually go into one interface and out of the other interface you know from the firewall's perspective most of the time you're going to use the in direction for all your rules so i actually thought this was an interesting experiment because i never used any out rules before and i actually had to think about how i actually wanted this to demonstrate how the traffic actually is flowing in and out of the firewall and how you can actually filter traffic from both directions so creating a block rule is one way i could show you that i, I can actually filter traffic coming out of the interface even though i allowed the traffic in you can actually block it on the way out as well so i hope you you learned something new today and until next time I'll see you later.